Ibigay na lang sa kanila. Ito ako yung tubig niya. Ibigay mo na sa kanila. Nainom ako na. Session is called to order. All rise for the singing of the national anthem. Session is called to order. All rise. Please remain standing for the invocation to be delivered by the lady from the party list Kalinga, the Honorable Irene A. Saulong. For the invocation to be delivered Let's put ourselves by the lady in the presence from of the, the party list Kalinga. The Almighty God, we offer you our highest praises. We humbly stand before you to ask for guidance and wisdom in today's plenary session. May we be able to discharge our duties so that we will be able to honor you and best serve the interests of our countrymen in this trying time. May all our thoughts, decisions, and actions be anchored in truth, service, and honor, that we truly represent the lofty aspirations of our constituents, the Filipino people. Please allow us to be instruments that we will help the country survive this pandemic by sowing hope and nurturing your will for a better tomorrow. May this be our core principle during discussions so that we can compromise despite differing views and still find a way to work together. Lord, unto you, so that we entrust this session as well as every participant for protection and providence. This we ask in Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we call the roll of members. The Secretary General is directed to call the roll of members. Majority of members. Mr. Speaker, I move Honorable to Representatives. Abante. Abaya. Abelia Nosa. Abu. Abweg Saldivar. Abunda. Acosta. Abante. Acosta Alba. Adron. Abdinkula. Agabas. Agarao, Agipay, Aguinaldo, Albano, Almario, Alonte, Alvarez Franz, Alvarez Genaro, Alvarez Bantalion, Amante Matba, Amato, Angara, Aragones, Arbon, Arenas, Arroyo, Atienda, Omentada, Babasa, Bagatin, Balintong, Banyas Nograles, Barba, Barbers, Baronda, 
Barzaga, Baskug, Bautista, Bautista Bandiran, Belmonte, Benitez, Berno, Biazon, Billones, Biron, Polilia, Bondoc, Bordado, Bravo, Brosas, Bulut, Busto, Kabatbat, Kabochan, Cabredo, Cagas, Calderon, Calito, Caminero, Campos, Canama, Kawagdan, Cardema, Cari, Castelo, Castro Fran, Castro Fredenil, Cayetano Alan, Cayetano La Arni, Celeste, Chato, Chipeco, Tunggalaw, Co Angelica, Co Elizaldi, Co Juanco, Co Liantes, Crisolo, Cua, Cuaresma, Cueva, Culiamat, Dagoo, Dalipe, Dalog, Culiaza, De Jesolo, De Venecia, Cuaresma, Defensor Lawrence, Defensor Michael, Dagoo, De Los Santos, De Loso Montalia, Di Maporo Abdulla, Di Maporo Cali. Duavit, Defensor Michael, Duhali, Duterte, Loso Montalia, Di Maporo Abdullah, Faustino Ino, Di Maporo Faustino Michael, Di Ian, Ebcas, Eclay, Elago, Enverga, Erise, Eriget, Ermita Buhain, Escudero, Espina, Espino, Estrella, Fariñas Ria, Fariñas Rudy, Fernando, Fernando, Ferrer Juliet, Ferrer Luis, Flores, Fortun, Fortuno, Frasco, Fuente Bella, Gaite, Garbin, Garcia Jose Enrique, Garcia Pablo Jan, Garcia Vincent, Garin Janet, Garin Sharon, Gasataya, Gachalian, Gato, Heron, Go Ed, Go Mark, Gonzaga, Gonzales Aurelio, Gonzales Neptali, Gonzales Sandro, Goriseta, Gico, Gulias, Guya, Jaresco, Hataman, Hernandez, Herrera D, Hofer, Halos Jos, Javier, Jimenez, Co Elisa, Co Wilton, Kung Hun, Labad Labad, Lakson, Lakson Noel, Lagman, Lagon, Lara, Lazatin, Liachon, Legarda, Lim, Lim Kai Chong, Lopez, Loyola, Lusotan, Makapagal Arroyo, Maceda, Madrona, Malapitan, Mangawang, Manguda Datu, Marcoleta, Mariano Hernandez, Marino, Marquez, Martinez, Matba, Matugas, Mendoza, Momo, Natividad Naganyo, Nava, Nieto, Noel, Nograles Jericho, Nograles Fidel, Nolasco, Nunez Malanyaon, Uaminal, Olivares, Ong Jose, Ong Ronnie, Ordanes, Ortega, Uano Dizon, Pacquiao Alberto, Pacquiao Rogelio, Padiernos, Paduano, Palma, Pancho, Panotes, Peña, Pichay, Pimentel, Pineda, Plaza, Puno, Kimbo, Radaza, Ramirez Sato, Remulia, Revilla, Reyes, Rivera, Robes, Rodriguez, Roman, Romero, Romualdez Martin, Romualdez Yeda, Romualdo, Romulo, Roque, Sakdalan, Sagarbaria, Sakaluran, Salceda, Salimbangon, Salo, Salvador Tambunting, Sanchez, Sangkopan, Santos Recto, Sarmiento, Saulug, Savellano, Shaw, Silverio, Singson, Singson Mihan, Sinsuat, Suansing Estrelita, Suansing Horacio, Suarez Aleta, Suarez David, Suntay, Si Alvarado, Taduran, Taliado, Tan Alaysa, Tan Angelina, Tan Samir, Tan Sharian, Tan Sherni, Tejada, Teves Arnolfo, Teves Jose, Yanko, Tolentino, Torres Gomez, Tulfo, Tupas, Chutor, 
T. Alan, T. Diego, Umali Alfonso, Umali Victoria, Unabia, Ungab, Uy Juliet, Uy Rolando, Valeriano, Valmayor, Vargas, Vargas Alfonso, Velasco, Veloso, Vergara, Villa, Villa Fuerte, Villanueva Eduardo, Villanueva Noel, Villar, Villaraza Suarez, Villarica, Violago, Yap Eric, Yap Victor, Yu, Zamora Ronaldo, Zamora Waikurat, Zarate Zubiri. Mr. Speaker, the roll call shows the 298 members responded to the call. With 298 members responding to the call, Chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we approve Journal Number 9, dated November 8 to 10, 2021. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Hearing no objection, the motion is carried. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we now proceed with the reference of business and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the titles of bills, resolutions on first reading, as well as communications and committee reports. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Secretary General is directed to read the title of bills and resolutions on first reading, as well as communications and committee reports for referral by the chair to the appropriate committee. Reference of business, bills on first reading, House Bill number 10457, establishing a national strategy for the development of artificial intelligence. Science and technology. House Bill number 10458, requiring mandatory COVID-19 vaccination for all workers by Representative Heron. Labor and employment. House Bill number 10462, providing for the Magna Carta of Barangay Health Workers by Representatives Yap, Eric, and Duterte. Local government. House Bill number 10465, granting a maternity benefit to women workers in the informal economy by Representative Cabochan. Labor and employment. House Bill number 10466, providing for lifetime validity of PWD identification cards by Representative Cabochan. On persons with disabilities. House Bill number 10467, establishing the Study Now Pay Later program with Representative Cabochan. Basic education and culture, higher and technical education. House Bill number 10468, to provide youth suicide early intervention and prevention by Representative Cabochan. Health. House Bill number 10469, promoting Philippine indigenous and traditional writing systems and providing for their protection, preservation, and conservation by Representatives Velasco and Nieto. Basic education and culture. House Bill number 10470, reclassifying certain parcels of land of the public domain in General Santos City as alienable and disposable lands Natural by Representative Banyas Nograles. House Bill number 10471, establishing an irrigation management office of Dania in General Santos by Representative Banyas Nograles. Agriculture and food. House Bill number 10472, establishing evacuation centers in every barangay by Representative Banyas Nograles. Disaster resilient. House Bill number 10473, granting cash incentive benefits to members of the field health by Representative Banyas Nograles. Committee on Health. House Bill number 10474, granting franchise to the city government of General Santos by Representative Banyas Nograles. Legislative franchises. House Bill number 10475, providing for the inclusion of subjects of the tribal cultures, practices, arts and sciences, sciences history and traditions of the indigenous culture communities. Indigenous peoples in the primary and secondary curricula of all public and private primary secondary schools within the ancestral domains by Representative Banyas Nograles. Basic Education and Culture. House Bill Number 10476, declaring the hot springs in Barangay Pansol, Calzada, and Bukal in Calamba, Laguna as tourist destinations by Representative Chipeco. Tourism. House Bill Number 10477, establishing the Sakol Island National High School in Barangay Langgang, Dua, Zamboanga City by Representative Dalipe. Basic Education and Culture. House House Bill number 10479, establishing a framework for blue economy, promoting stewardship and sustainable development of coastal and marine ecosystems and resources. Economic Affairs. Resolutions. House Resolution 2339, requiring all LGUs to prepare and affirm their respective forest land use plans in coordination Local with the government. Representative House Resolution 2341, commending the Oro Integrated Cooperatives by Representative Ganama. Development. House Resolution 2342, Directing Committee on Dangerous Drugs to investigate the drug raid operations by law enforcement in Barangay Pindasan, Mabini, Davao, Dito, Elago, and others.
House Resolution 2343, urging the House to inquire the implementation of flexible mode learning by the CHED and the Rules. Representative Ilago. Messages from the Senate. Message dated November 8, 2021, informing the House that on even date, Senate approved Conference Committee Report of the Bicameral Conference Committee on Disagreeing Provisions of House Bill No. 1087. 9087 and Senate Bill 2373. Justice. Message dated November 8, 2021, informing the House that the Senate on even date passed Senate Bill 1947. Justice. Message dated November 8, 2021, informing the House that on even date the Senate designated Senators Gordon Lacson, Angara, Subiri, and Rilon as conference to Bicam Conference Committee on Disagreeing Provisions of Senate Bill 1947 and House Bill 9086. Justice. Message dated November 10, 2021, informing the House that on November 9, 2021, the Senate approved Conference Committee Report on the Bicameral Conference Committee on the Disagreeing Provisions of Senate Bill No. 1928 and House Bill 28203. Energy. Communications. Letter dated October 13, 2021, of the BSP Governor. Submitting to the House a copy of the report to Congress on public sector foreign borrowings approved by the BSP on third quarter of 2021. Banks and financial intermediaries. Letter dated October 13, 2021 of the Tariff Commission Acting Director 3 Finance Management and Administrative Service informing the House. Appropriations. Letter dated October 14 of the CSB Executive Director submitting to the Civil House. Civil service and professional regulation. Emails and letters from certain provincial governors, municipal mayors, and local government officials informing the House. Letters dated October 18 and 22 of the BSP Deputy Director, Office of General Counsel and Legal Services. Banks and financial intermediaries. Email dated October 26, 2021 of the Accounting Division, DOTR, furnishing the house. Appropriation. Report dated November 9, 2021 of the Secretary General of the House of Representatives on enrolled copies of consolidated version of Senate Bill 1373 and House Bill 9943. Which were returned to the Senate and to be submitted to the Office of the President for His Excellency's consideration and signature pursuant to Section 18H, Rule Rules. 6 of the Rules of the House. Committee Reports. Report Number 1315 of the Committees on Rural Development and Appropriations on House Bill Number 10460. Report Number 1316 of the Committees on Higher and Technical Education, Appropriations and Ways, Ways and Means on House Bill 10461. Report Numbers 1317 and 1318 of the Committees on Health. Appropriations on House Bill Numbers 10463, 10464. Report Numbers 1319 and 1320 of the Committees on Tourism and Appropriations on House Bill Numbers 10478 and 10481. Report Number 1321 of the Committee on Youth and Sports Development on House Resolution 2349. Report Number 1322 of the Committee on Ways and Means on House Bill Number 10488. All of these committee reports to the Committee on Rules. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we open the privilege R. Hearing no objection, the motion is carried. Privilege R is open. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Edgar Erise of the 2nd District of Caloocan for his privilege speech. The gentleman from the 2nd District of Caloocan, the Honorable Edgar Erise, is recognized. Please proceed. Mr. Speaker, uh, since... Uh, Honorable Elisa is still not present. May I now recognize the Honorable Irene Gay Saulog of the Party Elis Kalinga for her privileged speech. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Hearing no objection, the Honorable Irene Gay F. Saulog of the Party Elis Kalinga is recognized. Please proceed, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today on a matter of personal and collective privilege. As we are celebrating this Children's Month this November, please allow me to highlight a matter intimately related to children's rights. The House and the Senate have ratified the BICAM report on the Administrative Adoption Bill. It is now awaiting the signing by the President. This bill will make the adoption process simpler, faster, and inexpensive. It removes the lengthy and costly judicial phase and phases the adoption process in the hands of the DSWD 
which possesses the expertise and experience on the matter. In 2020, there is an estimated 2 million abandoned children in the country. The said bill will provide an expedited process that offers a life-changing opportunity for these children in their need of a family that will care for them and help them achieve their dreams. The pandemic has provided more impetus for making adoption accessible to the ordinary Filipinos. This crisis has opened our eyes to the importance of a family in our lives. Without the protection and security that a family offers, children would not have been able to survive this catastrophic once-in-a-lifetime event. The pandemic also shut down our courts for lengthy periods, further exacerbating the slow judicial process. Chief Justice Alexander Gasmundo admitted in his speech last October that he is expecting a backlog of cases in various regional trial courts due to the physical closure of courts and reduction of staff during the lockdowns. All this gives us more reason why the Administrative Adoption Bill must be signed into law. Maraming bata, Mr. Speaker, ang nangungulila sa pagkalinga ng mga magulang, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Sana po ay mabigyan natin sila ng maagang pamasko. Ang regalo na mapabilang sa isang pamilyang kakalinga sa, ka sa kanila. Huwag po natin silang pagkaitan ng pagkakataong magkaroon ng magandang kinabukasan. Sa pagkakaroon ng isang mapagkalingang pamilya, magkakaroon ng pag-asa ang mga bata. Sa pagsasabatas ng administrative adoption, pinangangalagaan natin ang karapatan ng mga bata na mapabilang sa isang mapagmahal at mapagkalingang pamilya. Dahil sa batas na ito, ang mga batang ito ay pwede nang mangarap muli sa tulong at gabay ng kanilang magiging magulang, magiging matagumpay sila, at maaabot ang kanilang mga pangarap. On behalf of the Advocates of Children's Rights, I therefore reiterate the call for the signing of this bill on administrative adoption. I, together with my colleagues, have worked tirelessly for the passage of this bill. I humbly issue an appeal to the President that this matter be given due preference. The welfare of the Filipino children deserve his utmost attention. This Children's Month, it is just right and fitting that we put children's first. Mr. Speaker, maraming maraming salamat po at mabuhay ang bawat batang Pilipino and happy Children's Month. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable uh, Representative Irene Gay, so log of the party this Kalinga, to the Committee on Rules for its appropriate action. Hearing no objection, the motion is carried. <coughs> Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the lady from the party this Act Teachers, Representative Franz El Castro, for her privileged speech. Hearing objection, the motion is carried. The Honorable Representative of the Party List Act Teachers, Honorable Franz Castro, is recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Magandang hapon po sa inyo at sa ating mga colleagues at sa ating um, mga mamayang Pilipino. Magand Muli, magandang araw ginong speaker at sa mga kapaw kinatawan. Ngayong araw ng lunes, ang muling pagbubukas ng 100 out of 48,000 public schools para sa payotran ng limited face-to-face -face classes sa kabila ng pandemya. Habang sa tertiary level naman, nasa 65 out of 2,000 higher education institutions ang nakalimited campus reopening noong pang May 2021. Ang, pin ang Pilipinas ang pinakamatagal na bansa na nagbukas ng paaralan at tayo na rin ang may pinaka-conservative na plano sa school reopening. 
Ayon nga po sa datos ng UNICEF noong Agosto 2021, isa tayo sa limang bansa na hindi pa nagbukas ng paaralan at halos 27 milyong estudyante ang apektado. Lubhang natagalan ang pagbubukas ng paaralan dahil ang administrasyon mismo ay walang willpower or appropriate measures para buksan ang mga paaralan. Iniasa ito sa mga LGU at school admin administrations ang tungkulin sa paghahanda sa mga paaralan kahit kulang ng suporta mula sa ating pambansang gobyerno. At dahil na rin sa mabagal, mahina at di sa yantipikong COVID response, nagdadalawang isip ang mga magulang dahil walang kasiguraduhan ang kaligtasan ng mga estudyante at ng mga teachers. Sino ga ba namang magulang ang magsusugal ng buhay ng kanilang mga anak dahil ang mga papasukang eskwelahan ay halos walang tubig at pasalidad at disenyo para sa sapat na ventilasyon. Batid ng lahat ang malalang learning crisis sa bansa sa ilalim ng distance learning. Kung kaya dapat lamang na mabuksan na ang mas marami pang paaralan sa ligtas na paraan. Noong nakaraang biyernes, um, Mr. Speaker, November, 20, November 12, nagkaroon po ang pinatawang ito ng pagkakataon na bumisita sa ilang mga eskwelahan o dalawang eskwelahan dito sa Quezon City para po sa kanilang gin ginagawang ginag ginag paghahanda para sa face-to-face -face classes. Dumalo po ako sa um, dalaw dalawang paaralan sa Quezon City na napili ng NCR, DepEd, para sa limited face-to-face. -face. Um, kapag ito ay naging alert level na at makita ang kanilang mga paghahanda. Una po, Mr. Speaker, ay sa Payatas B Annex Elementary School. Ayon sa principal, 4 hours and 30 minutes ang magiging klase ng mga bata mula kinder hanggang grade 6. Ang mga bata na lalahok sa face-to-face -face classes ay nasa 20 lamang kada classroom. Nasa 400 out of 1,200 estudyante naman ng paaralan ang voluntaryong pumayag sa face-to-face. -face. Nakita rin namin ang kahandaan sa pasilidad. Ang mga upuan ng mga estudyante ay may mga sapat na social distancing. May nakahandang face mask at alcohol sa, sa pasukan ng classroom at bago pumasok ng paaralan ay mayroong hand washing facility. At mayroong at least two electric fans at bukas na bintana para masigurado ang proper ventilation. Magkaiba rin ang entrance at exit na mayroong malinaw na markings at naglaan din ng pa ang paaralan ng maliit na tent bilang isolation area. Sa bagong silangan, elementary school naman, Mr. Speaker, mula kinder hanggang grade 3 ang magsasagawa ng face-to-face. -face. Nasa 396 students out of 9,000 ang voluntaryong sasali sa face-to-face. -face. At sabi nga ng principal, mas marami pa raw ang gusto. Ang bawat classroom ay kayang mag-accommodate ng labing limang estudyante at may sariling comfort room. Sa bawat labas ng classroom, at building, mayroong mga hand washing facilities. Nakaabot din po sa amin na mayroon ding mga waiver na pinapipirmahan sa magulang para alisin ang liability ng DepEd. Sa tingin namin, ito ay unconstitutional at irresponsible at dapat maging void. Sa ngayon po, marami na pong nagbuk nag nagbukas ang mga establishment tulad ng mga malls at pinayagan na pong lumabas ang mga bata. Kung kaya nating buksan ang mga malls para sa mga kabataan, mas lalong dapat nating paghandaan at bigyang prioridad ang mas malawak na pagbubukas ng mga paaralan. Kaninang umaga po ay na, na nakita natin ano, doon sa mga reports sa news, yung ilang mga eskwelahang nagbukas na. Nakita naman natin ang talagang paghanda ng ating mga schools, mga principals at ang mga kaguruan. Ilan lamang po sa naobserbahan ko no yung dito sa Longos Elementary School sa may barangay Pangapisan Alaminos Elementary School may napansin po tayo uh, Mr. Speaker na mga pulis na nasa loob ng mga classroom ng mga elementary uh, pupils at sila po ay hindi lang po nakapasok doon complete uniform at meron pa pong mahabang mga baril Ano po ba ang ginagawa ng mga polis na ito doon sa loob ng classroom 
sa mga sa mga estudyante na may edad na lima hanggang walong taon. So, hindi po ba ito ano, uh, paglabag yung sinasabi nating safe school? Tingin ko po, Mr. Speaker, uh, mga kapwa ko kinatawan, para po pumanatag ang lahat na ligtas ang balik paaralan at mabilis na bubuksan ang mga marami pang eskwelahan sa buong bansa, pinihiling natin sa ating gobyerno na maglaan ng dagdag na budget para may isagawa ang mga sumusunod. Una po, Mr. Speaker, ay ang libreng lingguhang antigen testing para sa screen ng ating mga kalahok sa face-to-face -face classes, lalong-lalo na po sa mga eskwelahan. Nabasa ko rin report kanina-kanina lang, uh, yung pong uh, dalawang school na kasama dito sa Sambales. Meron pong ilang mga teachers na nag-positive sa antigen. Kaya, uh, kaya pinagpaliban muna yung face-to-face -face classes. Mahalaga, Mr. Speaker, uh, mga kapwa kinatawan, itong talagang screening ng mga kalahok sa face-to-face -face classes. Ikalawa ay ang special vaccination program sa mga lokalidad na mga paaralang lalahok sa pilot run. So ako po ay natutuwa ano kung magkakaroon po talaga ng ano no ng mga araw ng mga vaccination doon sa mga uh, sa eskwelahan mismo. Okay? At pangatlo po ay yung retrofitting ng mga classroom para sa mas maayos na ventilation at pagtiyak sa mga kailangang pasilidad. Meron lang po akong konting obserbasyon doon sa mga uh, plastic na barrier ano na, na nilagay sa lahat ng classroom sa mga probinsya. Napansin ko po ito. At tingin ko po hindi ito po kailangan hanggat ma-maintain po natin yung 2 meters apart na social distancing sa ating mga bata. Dahil napatunayan na po sa scientific findings na hindi po ito um, gaanong epektibo para masugpo yung uh, COVID-19. For as long as ay mga bata po ay uh, nakamas, ganun din po yung lahat ng mga kalahok o sa loob ng classroom. Pang-apat po ay yung mass hiring ng mga school nurse. Ito po ang kailangan natin, nating mga school. At napansin ko po ano, yung sinasabi ng DepEd na training daw po ng mga teachers para ano naman, maging clinic teachers. Tingin ko po ay hindi ito nararapat at hindi po ta tama ito. Magkaroon po dapat ng um, mga totoong uh, medical experts sa loob ng ating mga paaralan. At least one nurse per school. At ang ikalima, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, ay yung medical fund para sa libreng pagpapagamot na kung sakaling may mahawa sa COVID-19 ay matitiyak natin na sila po ay matitreat agad-agad. Mahalaga rin po na maglaan ng sapat na dagdag na pondo para sa ligtas na balik paaralan. Ngayong nasa Senado na ang General Appropriations Bill, pinihikayat namin na tuluyan, na tuluyan nang tanggalin ang mga pondo at i-abolish ang ntfl cap o yung National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict at i-rechannel ito para sa dagdag na pondo ng maintenance and other operating expenses ng mga paaralan at ipang maprograma ng DepEd para masiguro na magkaroon ng ligtas na balik paararan. Nararapat na dagdagan ng gobyerno ang 100 pilot schools kasi sobrang liit sa porsyento lamang ito ng 48,000 na mga public schools. Bigyan natin ng pagkakataon ng mga kabataan na magkaroon ng akses sa edukasyon. Ito na po ang panahon upang bigyang prioridad naman natin ang kalidad at kaligtasan sa edukasyon sa kabila ng pandemya. Maraming salamat po, ginong speaker, at magandang hapong muli sa ating lahat. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Franz Castro, the Party List Act teachers, to the Committee on Rules for, this, for their appropriate action. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Privileged speech is referred to the Committee on Rules. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the lady from the party list Kabataan, Representative Sarah Jane Ilago, for her privileged speech. Are there any objections? Hearing none. The lady from the party list Kabataan, the Honorable Sarah Jane Ilago, is recognized. Madam, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today on a matter of personal and collective privilege ahead of the observance of a significant day among students, not only in the Philippines, but worldwide. 
November 17 is the National Students' Day in the Philippines. This is observed on the same day as the International Students' Day to commemorate the anniversary of the Nazi storming of the University of Prague in 1939. Because of the demonstrations in the said university against the Nazi occupation and the execution of its nine student leaders, over 1,200 students were sent to the concentration camps and all Czech universities and colleges were closed. The International Students' Day every November 17 as first marked in 1941 as the international observance of student activism. In the Philippines, Mr. Speaker, the commemoration of the National Students' Day is likewise in recognition of the invaluable contribution of student activism to Philippine democracy and to foster leadership among Filipino students as provided under Republic Act Number no. 11369. The Filipino student movement today is built on decades of victory and long fought struggles of students and people's movements for free higher education, students' rights and welfare, academic freedom, as well as youth empowerment, good governance, gender equality, justice, climate, and sovereignty. The students are likewise at the helm of the call for the safe and safe school reopening, as well as the promotion of quality and accessible education amid the pandemic. Instead of addressing these pressing concerns, Mr. Speaker, we are seeing more and more students and youth being targeted and singled out by authorities just for speaking up and raising their issues. Student and youth voices in schools, communities, and even in Congress are being silenced and vilified for speaking truth to power. We must demand an end to this threat, harassment, intimidation against students, youth, and the people. Safe and protected spaces for meaningful youth participation are key to provide more opportunities for students to exercise genuine leadership and fulfill their role in nation building. In keeping with this aim, Mr. Speaker, we hope that our honorable members of the House of Representatives of the 18th Congress can stand in solidarity with us in the third National Students' Day 2021. This will be on November 17, two days to go, Mr. Speaker, for us to not only discuss the current situation of student movement for democracy in our country, but also to explore ways of moving forward to reclaim spaces for student and youth voices and push for the safe and face the opening of schools amid the pandemic. Kaya ngayon pa lang, you know, speaker, binabati ko na ang lahat. Isang pandaigdigang araw ng mga estudyante. Happy National Students' Day. Isang pagbati sa araw ng mga estudyante ng Pilipino. Maraming salamat at pabuhay po kayo. Okay pa. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we refer the speech of the Honorable Sarah Jane Elago of the Party of Kabataan to the Committee on Rules. For Are there any objections? Action. Hearing none, the motion is carried. Speech of the Honorable Sarah Jane Elago is referred to the Committee on Rules. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we close the privilege hour. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion is carried. Privilege hour is terminated. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I'm uh, under the calendar of unfinished business. I move that we resume consideration of House Bill 9322 under the committee report 946. Mr. Speaker, I move that we, uh, may ask the Secretary General be directed to read the title of the bill. Secretary General, kindly read the title of House Bill 9322. House Bill Number 9322, an act amending sections 102, 104, 119B, 201, 209, 307, 402, 407, 
800-1-1-0-0-1-1-0-1-1-0-1-1-0-1-1-0-1-1-0-1-1-0-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-
The eyes have it. House Bill 10322 approved on second reading. Majority floor leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the session for a few minutes. Session is suspended for a few minutes. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. I join. I join. 
Session is resumed. Mr. Speaker, I move that we adjourn session until November 16 at 2 p.m. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Hearing no objection, the motion is carried. Session is adjourned until tomorrow, November 16, Tuesday, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. <laughs> Recording stopped. Boss, <laughs> Kaloy, congrats. Tinapos tayo na lahat.